Hello and welcome to the Familiar Evils YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a quick little uh, video. It's part of my TTRPG or my RPG to tabletop series. So we get started here. Let's go ahead and turn up the music volume a little bit. So it's got some good music here. So I'm mainly just going to be talking about Warcraft today. And uh, I'm going to go back through the prologue. I did a video of this before, but I didn't like it. I was sick and felt all muffly and all that. So <clears throat> we're just going to start with the prologue again. So let's start with just the video. Where else to start? And the wonderful cinematics. So... I would let the cinematic go for itself, but I mean, ultimately you can watch these cinematics on your own. I might be a little quiet during it. This, uh, <laughs> this cinematic ended up backfiring this remade version because when I saw this, I think me, like everybody else expected that Warcraft three reforged that all their cinematics were going to look like this, and I was so hyped. Oh, God, I was so hyped. <clears throat> this was the game that broke me with Blizzard. The only reason I'm really playing it is, one, Warcraft has been an inspiration for me and has been one of my favorite games of all time. And I think that it would be a lie to say that I don't garner a lot of inspiration from the Warcraft series on what my plans are for my homebrew world. Um... I just love this game. This game was my first love when it came to video games. Like, I'd played plenty of video games before this, but Warcraft became a lifestyle to me. I remember playing Warcraft 3, like, <laughs> every chance I could get. My dad had a PC gaming cafe, and uh, we could have LAN parties and all that. And, of course, we had internet, so I had a very... You know, for all the faults of my childhood, that was one of the coolest aspects of it, was the fact that my dad owned an effing PC gaming cafe. So I got to play Warcraft 3 on land with people, like, literally feet away from me. Chaos has come at last. Warcraft 3 refunded. <laughs> oh, that was so unfortunate. Um, I guess we'll watch Thrall's vision as well. Because we're going over this whole thing again. And it wouldn't be a proper video series without me watching each and every cinematic. I mean, I purposely found the cheat codes of this game because I was so bad at it. I just wanted to see the cinematics when I was a kid. So I knew all the cheat codes to get me through everything, you know. <laughs> I might get some of them mixed up with StarCraft because I do know all the StarCraft uh, <clears throat> cheat codes as well. There's like Black Sheep Wall. Um, I think I think Black Sheep Wall is StarCraft and then, then um, I see dead people might be Warcraft. Uh, all your base are belong to us ultimately just defeats the level. And then um, I think it's like set up the bomb or something like that beats the whole campaign, which seems to be completely stupid because you don't get, I think it, you couldn't even like easily go see, watch the cinematics or something i remember not being happy with that one i was like oh okay i just get to see the credits and you can go see the credits anytime you want um seemed like a really stupid way to get to the credit scene plus the story within the game is also interesting like all the little miniature cinematics i really want a moment in my D, &D game because my D, D homebrew world the next campaign i want has a very high chance for war unless somehow my players just like hack the world and manage to fix everything before bad shit happens i want there to be a lot of war in my next campaign 
and they ultimately get to choose who they dis they side with. And the thing about it is there's not really going to be... That's another thing about, like, Warcraft, is there's not really a good or a bad side, really. I mean, the orcs started out bad and seemed bad, but they, they did a good job making them three-dimensional and not just random baddies. So that was definitely, like, the big goal they had in Warcraft 3. I think it was Chris Met Metzen. It's, like, entire goal was to make sure that the orcs were more three-dimensional and understandable. Especially with Thrall. And he had the books for that, and they tried to have the that failed game. But it looks an awful lot like this kind of animation, just a lot more downgraded. <laughs> me out. We're gonna ignore the uh, <laughs> um, tutorial, dude. We're just gonna run through. And then if I have time, I'll get through some of the human campaign. So we're gonna go to chapter one, Chasing Visions. <clears throat> Somewhere in the Arathi Highlands, Thrall, the young war chief of the Orcish Horde, wakes from his troubling dream. Where is the any key? That's a classic joke. I don't know, Thrall. What kind of nightmare was that? I have a character who I kind of want to lightly base off the Prophet, who's an NPC I've already introduced into a current homebrew world campaign. Um, who's an amnesiac. He doesn't understand his path, past yet, though he, in the campaign, is starting to grasp what's going on. I think he, at this point, would have some serious suspicions as to his origins <clears throat> and before long he will gain those memories and those aspects of those memories will severely dis uh, change his path in life so he has a lot of room for morally gray aspects but also um a chance to do good things i don't know it's kind of like I'm trying more and more to let my players move things forward, and I'm going to see how they react to this guy and how they try to work things out with him. Yay, I'm level two. I think last time I went through here, there was nothing on these, so I'm not going to waste my time breaking those buildings down. Yeah, a prophet-like character would be interesting, and he's a, in that sense he's a lot like Medivh. Where Medivh did good and bad things. I don't think quite the same chance as uh, as Medivh. He's I don't think he's going to be that that bad. Like he's not summoning an entire horde of <laughs> horde, but um. Psh. Potions of mana. That's another thing, like... I find D&Ds... <clears throat> like, there's so many things I'd like to translate from games like this into D&D, but it's it's impossible. Or not impossible, but, like, the balancing of it is weird. So, like, to do a mana potion, like, that'd be a spell slot potion? But, like, how OP could that be? Because so much of how you design... Um, like dungeons and stuff is really working on how many spell slots people have, how exhausted you want them to be before they make it to the end. And so it's like, then you have to account for, well, now they have potions that give them back certain spell slots. I, I would like to try that out. Um, I think consumables in games are very important as items to consistently give and it's something I need to be better at when it comes to dispersing loot is that consumables need to be more common than hard items but there also needs to be a gradient of hard items that's another difficulty with translating say like 
uh, items from a game like this or say like World of Warcraft. Let's just use that as an example. Um, when you get an item that say gives you more armor in D and D, like there's not much change in armor class. You don't have high numbers that you're going to be doing. So like there's no percentage based things. Um, you're not going to have a lot of stat increases because if you s increase a stat, like the range is insane uh, that you do by even just adding one to it. You know, because there's you know, 30 is the highest DC level that really a DM is supposed to set. Now, a DM can set whatever they want. If I say it's a million DC, it's a million DC. Of course, you're not going to do that because your players are going to hate you. But you kind of get the point. So I think one of the things that you could pull from, say, World of Warcraft are set bonus uh, items. And I see Griffin Saddlebag do that. If you don't know who Griffin Saddlebag is, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description but you can also just find them on google griffin saddlebag has a ton of great items and several of them are um i love that i can't believe they were ever part of the horde they're gonna be part of the horde again you meanie i'm not gonna say the r word i'm not gonna say it but it's all in your head now so i may as well have okay stop Manual of Health. Very good. That treasure chest held a magic tome that can be used to give Thrall a permanent benefit. Dobby. One of the things, so I kind of wrote down a list because I can be a little slow at uh, considering things to talk about here. So I have a little list here. Obviously, I talked about like Warcraft 3 was the first game I ever loved, and I kind of go over that a little more. Um, I started Blizzard games with StarCraft 1, um, pre-Brood War. I would guess that's like where I started falling in love with Blizzard games, because I also love the cinematics and love the uh, world of that, although I don't remember much about Brood War or pre-Brood War. Um, and I honestly, like I know most of the cinematics were, but there were several cinematics in StarCraft that were just, I felt forgettable whereas others were really good. Um, like the intro cinematic with uh, <laughs> the battle cruiser going over and somebody, one of the guys is like, where's the air support? And the guy just points up. Are you, are you sure you're ready to go through this, Alexi? Like, that's a good cinematic. So yeah, I started with that, but I played a lot of like fastest game ever in that for any of you who are familiar with old starcraft um i was just a <laughs> i was just a kid when i was playing that game and so uh that was my favorite game mode there was a lot of cl um, custom game modes that were pretty interesting too like pokemon evolution i think was one that um oh grubby was talking about i think that's his name grubby the Grubster, Warcraft 3, Pro. Yeah, he, uh... All right, let's continue. Yeah, continue it. Let's go. What the hell? You joined a local game. What the heck? What's going on here? Might have to... A departure. Let's play. Is it not gonna let me? There we go. Should let me build. Oh. The application encountered an unexpected error. Oh no. Alright, let's try again. This is gonna be a skip in the video. Let me play the game, gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm trying to make a video here, Blizzard. It may not even be Blizzard's fault. Oh, wait. Is it going to make me do that all over again? Yeah, no. No, we're just going to do Scourge of Lord Iran. My game's being stupid with me. I'm sorry, audience. But 
this right here. Oh, I love this cinematic right here. I want to do... If I can <clears throat> get my voice acting up a little bit, just enough to like voice a few different characters... Um, I would like to do my own like miniature cinematic-esque introduction into my homebrew world with an event like this. I have to resist quoting literally every line from this because I think this is honestly one of my favorite introductions ever. Reports that the orcs are regrouping. Certainly the recent attacks against the internment camps are evidence enough. Uh, I don't want to ruin it. This definitely is in a better fidelity. I will give it that. I just wish they would have gone through the same amount of effort with these cinematics as they had done with the introduction cinematic. Heed my warning. This plague that has gripped the Northlands could have dire ramifications. You wizards are just being paranoid. The world building for Warcraft was amazing. It'd be fun to run a Warcraft uh, TTRPG, and I have access to materials to do it. It's all set in 3.5, but it doesn't really matter. I think I could honestly just run a, uh, a Warcraft game without much any effort, considering how much I know about the world. Like, I, I think it'd be one of the easiest things for me to do <laughs> is run a Warcraft-based campaign. I used to read every single freaking book. Uh, I can't remember the name of all of them, but I remember the uh, one with Thrall, where he grows up as a slave. And I can't remember the name of the girl. I just remember he grew up in the uh, internment camp and... He was trained as a gladiator, and they kind of paralleled that with Varian Ren. I never read Varian's story, though. I, this is, I want this as sort of an introduction with my Prophet-esque character, where he's gained his memories back, and uh, the main threat that happens in my Thursday campaign will be eliminated. And he's linked to that story and that story of that big bad evil guy but he's aware of other big bad evil guys from uh his era so if any of my players are watching this it's you know whatever you learn about you might be able to put two and two together but he comes from a completely different era tens of thousands of years ago when an evil lich destroyed all life on earth and you know he's kind of like the lich king uh, and so this character, after the defeat of that individual who destroyed his entire civilization, all his people, that everyone he ever loved, knew, um, kind of has a choice at that point to pick up the pieces and start a new life or finish his project. Which I hope this... Okay, good. I'm still able to play. This game is being weird on me. But... Evil forces that he knew of from his world that were banished during his time, uh, some of them start arising again. And uh, he knows how bad they are. So he brings forth the news and just nobody cares. Nobody believes him. The only person who, and I think the only person who would, one of the few people... All right, so travel to Strong Brad. Strong Bad. Strong Bad was a man. Um, yeah, like the only one of the few people who might believe him, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have missing. So that's a plan. It may not be something that I end up doing. I forget if one of these something here has. Yes, here we go. Potion of healing. The crates that have stuff. I'm destroying the camp and it ends up being the crates that have items. Scroll of protection. There's so much I still remember about this game. Like this. Let's see. 
think you I think you can make the pick explode. I think it's also gonna damage somebody if I do. Yep, there we go. <laughs> it's too satisfying. Things I remember from being a kid. For my father, the king. Alright, I think that's all the items. It doesn't really matter how quickly I go through this. I'm just going to double check things. Because really I'm just going to talk mostly. Yeah. I think that that would be an interesting bit. Because I kind of like the idea. It was just, once again, like I keep inadvertently or purposely being inspired by Warcraft. And the idea of there being a war going on. Like several wars maybe. Uh, between multiple nations and then there being a uh, new threat that arrives that the nations were not prepared for because they just refused to listen to anybody uh, I think is a good an interesting path to go and so the players end up being some of the first people to learn the truth and they have to bring it to these nations that are currently in massive conflict. Hope! A group of gnomes kidnapped my little Timmy. I'll get little Timmy. Yes, yes ma'am. I'll do that. I get to go be a hero. So that's what I am, I'm a paladin. And I'm a hero, and I would never do anything wrong. Arthas Menethil, he's... He's a good boy. He would never do anything wrong. He totally wouldn't destroy his own kingdom. Spoiler alert. I want to see if I can make it through this without losing any... Of... <laughs> any of my, uh... Units. I feel like at 31, I'm much better at this game than I was when I was, like... 10 or 11. You are past redemption, he says as he destroys the building. Arthas reminds me a lot of um, Anakin Skywalker, honestly. He's kind of whiny. I bet you Arthas doesn't like sand either. He says it's coarse. He just doesn't like it. Although, so, that's another inspiration that I think is good for character design, is the really, I think, putting multiple characters, not just, like, say, a single Arthas Menethil, um, but multiple characters on a possible path to um, corruption. Like, characters that your players end up liking, and then maybe your players have to make decisions that are mutually exclusive to two different NPCs, and by choosing one, uh, they kind of forsake the other. And it may not even be a situation where that NPC is angry at them, but in doing so, that NPC ends up being pushed further down a path. Let's see, Holy Light is T. Just gotta remember that. Yeah, plenty of healing. I feel like I shouldn't have any troubles here. Yeah, I think that's maybe a bit of a um, thing that I don't ever really make use of. Is the concept of um, the possibility of NPCs becoming enemies down the line due to choices that the players make. A lot of my um, conflict that I try to do, which I think is a fault of mine, is that the conflict comes from the possibility of death. And I almost feel like it's inevitable that my NPCs don't die. Uh, 
I was going to try and kill off one of my PC's NPC brothers in a previous session. And it just didn't work out that way because the initiative order and then the NPC enemy um, ended up missing literally all of his attacks uh, or all of his saving throws. So he spent the whole time stunned and just died without even, like just with a whimper basically. It was rather pathetic. So I think as a, um, all right, let's see. I'll use one of my potions. I think as a DM, it's kind of, you have to think of many different ways to increase the tension. Is so You can learn a lot from stories and books and video games. Um, Star Wars in particular is, if I'm going to go back to Star Wars real quick. Um, one of the problems they had when it came to getting through A New Hope, because uh, Lucas didn't think that uh, he would really make it past The New Hope. He was just like, eh, I guess if this movie does good, that'd be great. Uh, but he didn't expect to have a sequel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for Devotion Aura. And so when he did, he realized that there were some issues with his story when it came to... Oh no. These damn orcs, the Blackrock clan. Um, oh, I'm missing... I'm missing one of my footmen. He's gone AWOL. Um, the tension... Uh, had a lot of chance for falling off because... He kind of knew that the audience knew there would be more movies. I think that it was kind of known that there was going to be a trilogy. And so you can't kill off the main character in a trilogy. And that leaves kind of a problem. I think there's something here I can... Undead show up here, don't they? No? Okay. And so, yeah, they were like, well, Luke Skywalker is guaranteed not to die in the second movie. So where's the tension going to come from? And so, or like major changes. And that's where the whole uh, I am your father bit came from. Because if I remember correctly, they did not intend that to be the case. That it really was that Vader had killed Anakin Skywalker. And they realized, no, it would make... Uh, for a more interesting story if Vader was actually Luke's father. Which was brilliant and absolutely worked. Um, you know, it was also like, was Luke going to finish his training? What was going to happen? Are his friends going to die now? Because he uh, couldn't fin uh, bring himself to finish his training. Like, all that stuff. Could he face Vader? A lot of interesting stuff to get around. Um... The uh, possible loss of tension in that story. I stand for the light, for honor. A sound plan. A sound plan. For honor. Of course. Certainly. A sound plan. Get that surround. I'm a surround expert. I'm better than Grubby already. Grubby, let's fight. <laughs> if you see this video, which I highly doubt you ever will, fight me, Grubby. I dare you, I haven't played this game in years. I could still beat you. Absolutely. Damnable Black Rock Clan killing random innocent people. How dare you. For my father, the king. I'll take that. May as well. I feel like I'm going to get more items before too long. In the next section of this. Although I may call it quits after this. Haul these wretches off with the rest of them. Let's see. Yeah, it's 8.57 here. I got an hour before I got to go to bed. So let's finish these people off and I'll chat a little more. I think one of the big things that people can learn from Warcraft, 
as much as I hate the company that made it at this point, um, for a multitude of reasons that I've talked enough about, um, is the fact that the race, uh, racial groups have a strong characterization to their cultures and that the lands around them uh, really fit a characterization as well. Like their lands are characters in and of themselves. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. Bring them home safe. That needs you at the orc encampment immediately. Moment. Let's get moving. Yeah, I would definitely take from Warcraft as a whole the fact that uh, there's distinct like racial nations like the Night Elves and the Orcs and stuff like that. And that's something that I'm kind of pulling into my own world. They all have their own interests. Uh, their own personalities and uh, cultures and just make them very unique try your best to make them unique because that's one of the things that can really um, fall to the wayside especially as a DM because there's just so much to do uh, is characterization and I think if you can make an interesting world uh, if you focus on that a lot you can have a, an interesting game <clears throat> and obviously you have to focus around your player characters and all that, but I think aside from some of the more obvious aspects of DMing and uh, focusing on your player characters, giving them an interesting world to be in with a lot of personality, and I think uh, you can directly rip a lot of inspiration from this game. So that's where I'm going to call it. Thank you for being at this, uh, coming to this episode of RPG to Tabletop. I will be returning to my regularly uh, structured program of wind waker hopefully this weekend but if you want to see those and haven't you can take a look at the video up here and that will link you to the first video of that series uh, otherwise you have a wonderful evening oh and real quick before i go don't forget to like comment and subscribe i just recently made my 69th subscription you now it's all downhill from here boys and girls because either direction i go whether i win get more or less you know end up moving away from that wonderful subscription number but i won't blame you if you become my 70th or more but all childhood high school level jokes aside you all have a wonderful day evening night whatever it is for you and I hope to see you in the next video peace